guys, it's Tonya and welcome to Crime Crime with Tonya. And I hope to um, present a case to you today about a woman named Omaima Nelson. She was 30, 23 years old and on Thanksgiving in 1991, the police come across the body of her husband in his car. They go to the house to inform her of the information and lo and behold, she already knew because she was the killer. The story goes she was an Egyptian born fashion model and very beautiful and she always used her looks to draw in the men. Apparently um, she liked to find some of these men in the bars and this is where she actually met her husband Neil Nelson. He was a 56 year old pilot. After two weeks of knowing each other, they get married, and then three weeks later, he's found dead. Why? She claims that he was sexually abusing her. He used her for rent money, like kind of lent her out for rent money, for her cars, for paying bills. He was into kinky stuff in the bedroom himself, and it would often, in her mind, rape her. Um, of course, this cannot be, you know, determined if this is true or not because of the circumstances. But, I mean, in my opinion, as the story grows, you're going to see that's probably not likely. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just my opinion. But from the scene, um, she had plunged scissors into his chest and was beating him with a clothes iron. And it ended up breaking her hand that she hit him so hard with that clothes iron. And butchered his body in the kitchen floor. She boiled his hands to try to remove the fingerprints. And she even stuck his head in the freezer. So it would be easier for her to break out his teeth. And then, to beat all, as a symbolic gesture in her mind, she ended up castrating him. And she claims it's because he sexually abused her. And that was a way to take back her power. She was arrested on first degree murder, but she claims it was self defense. Later, she's inter um, interviewed by a psychiatrist, and this is what she says to the psychiatrist. That day that it happened, she put on a little red dress, a red hat, and red shoes. And she sits down at the kitchen table, and she eats his ribs. Her husband's ribs. She's sitting there eating with barbecue sauce and says it tastes so sweet, just like in the restaurants. Are you kidding? <laughs> what? The psychiatrist, said, psychiatrist says she'd never seen anything like this in her 20 years of doing this. That the conversation was so bizarre and psychotic, she didn't know what to think. So. The Orange County Sheriff's Department, DA, discovered she was a con artist who preyed on men and used sexual bondage for her gain and usually held them up at gunpoint to rob them of their money. As the defense goes into the court, they try to tell them her background, saying she grew up in Egypt she was subjected to female genitalia mutilation and she claimed she had to su submit to Bill as a form of sexual humu humiliation in order to survive. They claimed Bill was a sadist who tortured her sexually, physically, and emotionally. And she tells a story of a time when she had a little kitten in her lap driving down the road with Bill. And he took the cat and threw it out the window. And kept 
going. This is her setting at the scene that he was a monster. The prosecution is one of the courtrooms with pictures from the crime scene of Bill being decapitated. The body being mutilated in such a way. Deliberations with the trial started on January 4th, 1993, and six days later, the juries come back with second degree murder charges. The jury foreman, which is famous Hooks was his name, said it was a tough decision. Jury couldn't come back with first degree evidence based on the based on the findings that was presented to them. But they could agree on second degree murder. The security the, 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 the Superior Court Judge, Robert Fitzgerald, sentenced her mama to 27 years to life. But since being in jail, she claims she didn't really eat Bill's ribs. But, do we really know? Yes or no? Did she? Didn't she? Let me know your thoughts down below. A parole meeting came up in 2011. And she insisted that she's not a monster. And she pointed out, I haven't killed my new husband, who she married in jail, by the way. She's had conjugal visits with him in the jail. And there's a kitchen with knives around. And she's never offed or killed him, she says. She's expected to serve out her sentence. <laughs> I don't think they found that very amusing. This story has been featured on Danley Women on the ID channel and it is um, titled Love You to Pieces if you want to check into that and find a little bit more information for your own. But friends, tell me, what are your thoughts below? Do you think this was a crime of passion? Do you think it was revenge? Or do you think she was just doing her next con job on the next me. Let me know your thoughts below and I'll see you in the next one guys. Bye ya!